Dr. Brighton here. I just got back from the SIBO Symposium at the National College of Natural Medicine in Portland, Oregon. Really fantastic speakers, great information shared, all of which I'm really excited to share with you. I'm going to be sharing some of the pearls that I learned that I think you'll find helpful over a series of videos. Today, I wanna to talk about the new blood test for the diagnosis of IBS or irritable bowel syndrome. For a long time, conventional medicine has viewed IBS as more of a psychological condition. The problem with that is that we've seen in the research that stress doesn't necessarily put you at higher risk for developing IBS. One such study was that on military personnel in which they looked at people who were in combat, which is very stressful, and found that they weren't at higher risk of developing IBS. However, those who were in the military and had actually contracted a bacterial infection resulting in traveler's diarrhea or food poisoning were at higher risk for IBS, which brings us to the new test and the possible underlying cause for IBS. The two tests I'm talking about are anti-CD TB antibody and anti-vinculin antibody. So let's talk a little bit more about the underlying cause and the mechanism so that you can understand why we're testing for, those, for these antibodies. When you ingest bacteria, they can release a toxin known as cytolethal descending toxin, or CDT. This is found with bacteria such as Campylobacter, E. coli, Shigella, and Salmonella. These bacteria release the toxin, and your body being wise creates an antibody to that toxin. However, in a process of molecular mimicry, your body can get confused and start to make antibodies to vinculin. Vinculin is a protein that's found in the nervous system in your gut, and it's part of what's called the migrating motor complex. Now we know that in IBS and SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, the migrating motor complex is, is compromised. What the migrating motor complex does is it actually sweeps out the gut. So it's like the house cleaner of the gut. If you're making antibodies to vinculin, those nerves are going to be destroyed and the migrating motor complex won't work optimally. So we test for anti-CDTB to see do you have antibodies to the toxin and then to anti-vinculin to see are you actually having an autoantibody response. So what I'm talking about here is a potential autoimmune underlying issue with IBS. Now I know when I say autoimmune that raises red flags and I definitely understand that. But what some of the research has shown is that after successful treatment, since most people with IBS, about over 80% of people with IBS have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, that's one of the treatments we're employing. But with treatment of the underlying cause and getting the gut and the immune system back in line as far as function is concerned, these nerve cells can actually regenerate in about three weeks which is pretty cool because most nerves in the body take a long time. It also tells us that the tissue destruction that takes place is not permanent. So you can actually heal your body and recover from IBS and become symptom free. So the two tests that you can order, the anti-CDTB and the anti-vinculin can be ordered through a lab called Commonwealth. They also do the lactulose breath test for screening for SIBO. I'm hoping to see more labs pick this up but it's really exciting to know now that we not only have tests that can help us differentiate IBS from IBD, but that we can also start to use these tests to understand the underlying cause and also the prognosis and how difficult the case may be to treat. All right, so I hope you found this really exciting and helpful. I know I was definitely interested to learn more about this and I hope you stay tuned for the additional videos where I'm gonna share more about IBS and SIBO and things that you can do to help heal your body.